morning. Butch Eichels, the Country Church, Marion, Texas. A short drive to worship the Lord in a relaxed atmosphere. sing them once a year, and so uh, this is one of those we only sing once a year, so it may take just a minute to, to catch this one again, but, uh, but you'll get it. Um, so let's stand together and uh, worship the Lord together, all right? Have every reason. 
him in prayer. Father, we do thank you for the privilege it's ours to be here tonight. Father, we pray for those who are on the trip to Branson that right now they'd feel your presence. Lord, that they, as they gather together and do the devotions, Lord, that they'd have their eyes on you. Bless them in a very special way. And Father, for us tonight, as we open the word, Father, may we not just be hearers of the word, but doers also. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, and his people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. Good to have each one of you, and always good to have guests. And if you're visiting for the first time, if you just hold your hand up just a second, they'd be right there by your side. All right, and she doesn't know it, but last Monday... Linda Duffield had a birthday. And yes, and I'm not telling you how old she is because I want to stay here for a while, okay? But happy birthday, happy four, amen. Rusty Hicks is home today. He went, uh, he got out of the hospital and uh, they called as he was coming down the driveway, so... Uh, He's glad to be home, and knowing him, he'll cheat. He was supposed to be on a liquid diet, and uh, my the doctor's idea of liquid diets and Rusty's is probably two different things, right? But anyway, thank the Lord that he's up and out, out of it, and uh, we continue to lift him up in prayer. Amen. 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 Okay. of upheaval. I watched a news report about the near about 200 hostages that are still in Gaza that have not been released. Um, uncertainty in what's happening in the war in Ukraine. And uh, Walker Moore's son, Caleb Moore, just got back from there, went to, went to Ukraine and was preparing to back in 2024 and then all sorts of other other things that are going on personally in lives the celebration of Christmas this Advent season is a celebration of the incarnation God with us the first coming of Jesus but there is a second Advent coming so as we sing these songs in celebration of the first advent, we do so with faith that he will come again. Maranatha, we, we move to Maranatha in the midst of this season because he is coming again. And so as we sing this, let's sing it with gratitude in our heart for what he has done, but confidence in, in our heart as to what he will do. So we prepare to receive the word tonight. Let's sing this together. Come the long expected Jesus born to set thy people free from our fears and sin.
Christian. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place, and with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace, this holy tide of Christmas, all others got the face, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort. All creation I 
they sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. winner on us, didn't it? As far as I'm concerned, this idea of a white Christmas is not all it's cracked up to be. Unless we could do it at 70 degrees or plus, okay. All right, tonight we invite your attention to the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 25. Those that can and will, if you stand as we read the Word of God. And don't feel bad because in the Old Testament they stood all day long. And y'all just stand for a few minutes. Verse 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, The fountain of the blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, And sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about him to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. And be whole of thy plague. Amen. Thank you and you may be seated. Now I've entitled this, Not Lost in the Crowd. You see, God never loses sight of the individual no matter how big the crowd is. And I don't know about you, but that's an assurance to me that God never loses Now, the scripture says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, that's the multitude right there. All, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says in Romans 3.10, there is none righteous, no, not one. In other words, the sinner cannot hide in a crowd. You know, there's a lot of people today that think that they can hide in a crowd. Maybe it's in a church and maybe it's in a religion, but they feel like that they can hide in the crowd. And if I'm honest with myself, I've probably been as backslidden in the church as a lot of people have been outside the church. Because we feel like many times that we can hide in the crowd. Well, there's another side to that coin. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that's the multitude, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's the individual, whosoever believeth should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Salvation is for every sinner in the crowd. You know, I, I think a lot about that whenever I'm preaching, whenever I'm looking over the congregation of the audience to realize that salvation's available to every person in the crowd. But not everybody will come to him. Not everybody will touch him. A lot of th times people make light of uh, Peter, James, and John going up to the mountain of transfiguration with the Lord. Now, I personally believe that others could have been invited. People talk about the inner circle, but I don't think they had that desire to be up on the mountain all alone with the Lord. And we can say this, and uh, I can personally attribute it, that when the Lord was dealing with me about preaching, Joan said, why don't you get your Bible and get alone with the Lord? Because I don't want to. <laughs> and I'm afraid if I get alone with the Lord, then he's going to tell me something that I might not be ready to hear. And uh, so, you know, I, I felt the security of being with a whole lot of people and not just me and the Lord. Well, the disciples here in this particular verse, they saw the crowd and Jesus saw the individual. Isn't that something? They looked out, sound like a bunch of preachers on Monday morning. How many did y'all have in church this last Sunday? And they see the crowd, but they don't see the individual. Turn to Mark 8, 22. Just right around the corner there. Mark 8, 22 it says, and he cometh to Bethsaida, that's Jesus, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clean. There's a lot of us that we've come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, but we still see men as trees walking. We don't see them personally, individually. We see them as trees that are walking. And we need a touch from the Lord Jesus Christ that would open our eyes, that we'd see people exactly like, they're at, like they are, exactly where they're at. And sometimes we don't know who those individuals are. Joan and I love our gospel coins and we hand them out in various places wherever we go. And Joan told me sometimes I think I'm going to give it to this person or that person and somebody else comes up. And it may have not been the person that she was looking forward to, but it's the one that God was looking forward to. Well, the multitude thronged him and the woman touched him. There's a difference between thronging the Lord and touching the Lord. Can you imagine the disciples when Jesus said, somebody touched me for I felt virtue go out of me. And they looked around and said, somebody touched you? I mean, look where we're at. 
Look at all the people that are here. But you know the Lord can tell when somebody touches him in a desire to get a hold of him, in a desire to know him better, in a desire to be healed, in a desire to be saved. They ought to write a song, Somebody Touched Me. That'd be a good one. Well, the crowds at church this Sunday morning will throng him, but few will touch him. Let that soak in just a minute. There, Everybody that comes in will have some kind of desire to be in the Lord's house and to participate and to throng him but not many will touch him. Every time I give an invitation, you know, that's my prayer, is that somebody would reach out to touch the Lord. Not just shove him, not just push him out of the way, not just sing the grand old hymns of the faith, but touch the Lord to get a hold of him. Well, the crowd will throng him, but few will touch him. Now, it's interesting that God will deal with people one at a time. One at a time. In verse 30 of our text, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? God deals with us one at a time. And you know, it's a wonderful thing. That's how much he cares for us. Not just with a broad brush, but he cares about me and he cares about you. And the Bible says, him that will come to me, Jesus is speaking, for I will in no wise cast out. <clears throat> People say, do I have to walk that aisle to be saved? No, you don't. You can be saved right where you're at. But there's something wrong if you don't want to let everybody know it. And walk that aisle and give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Whosoever will may come. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come. There's got to be that hunger. There's got to be that thirst in an individual's life before they'll ever come to the Lord. And I can stand here, and Dave can stand here, and we can go till there's not another breath in it. But unless the Holy Spirit of God touches them, they'll not come. Except the Spirit draw them, the Scripture says. They'll not come. So what do we need to do every Lord's Day, every Wednesday night, <clears throat> is pray that the Holy Spirit has access to every heart and every life. And to pray, Lord, let them come. Let them come. <clears throat> I really believe, and I've believed this for years, that if on any given Sunday, all of us were in one accord, and all of us were prayed up and praying for God's Holy Spirit to move in our midst, I personally don't believe a lost person could sit there and sit still. I think that they'd have ants in their pants or something, but they'd be trying to, to get where they meet with holy God. In Luke, the fifth chapter, we read about the man that was let down through the roof, that because of the crowd and the thronging of the crowd, 
They couldn't get this man to Jesus. So they ripped up the roof to be able to let him down to where Jesus could touch him. You know, if that happened today, what do you think would happen? They'd have a lawsuit on their hand for ripping up the roof. And they wouldn't care if that individual came to know the Lord. All I know is my roof is tore up. What is it worth to see somebody saved? You know, I, I think of that, and uh, what will settle it is what if it was your daughter or if it was your son or husband or wife? You'd be willing to do just about anything to see them saved, and you wouldn't be so concerned about the roof. Now, it's interesting, but there's several instances that the crowd kept people from coming to Jesus. The crowd, the multitude, actually kept people from coming to Jesus. This guy on the pallet that they lowered him down through the roof, he had a need. Let me tell you something. But they weren't concerned. They just wanted to get Jesus' autograph. Maybe buy a T-shirt. I don't know. But uh, there wasn't that concern for the lost. We have to guard against that. We have to be careful that we don't minimize the lostness of man. Uh, there's a preacher of a mega church that at one time was a great soul winner. And uh, his sister came to him and said, uh, Jack, I dreamed last night that I saw hell. And I heard the screams and the cries. And you could actually feel the heat. And Jack, I looked down and there was our dad. And I think, you know, like the song says, roll back the curtain of memory now and then and show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. And I believe it does us good to roll back the curtain of memory now and then and to see where you would be tonight if you didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Well, the encouragement here is to press through the crowd and touch him. You know, sometimes we got to press through programs. We got to press through events. We've got to make the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing is getting people to reach out and touch him. Amen. Well, the lady in the crowd, Jesus knew. And this Sunday, this Lord's Day, let's all pray for the woman in the crowd or the man or the young person that really has a holy hunger in their heart. Maybe they don't know what it's all about. I don't know about you, but when I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't know it all. Now, it's been a long time come since then, and a little surprised now, but I still don't know it all. And, uh, but nevertheless, I wanted to, to reach out to him. And when I did, he saved my soul and I thanked him for it. So now we pray for the individual in the crowd. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, we do thank you for your word, for your power, your presence. 
tonight as we stand and as we'll sing, Lord, we pray for people that want to touch you. And Lord, that we'd not worry about the throng, but we'd worry about the individual that wants to find Jesus sweet to their soul. And Father, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God speaks tonight. Will you let him have his way? Just as I am without one plea, but that God spoken to your heart. He's told you what you need to do. Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm trusting you. Will you do it on this verse? Just like you are. You can't change a thing, but he can change everything. Lord, I'm believing your word. I'm claiming your promise. How about you coming and dismissing us? Dear Father, we just we just come to you tonight, Lord, with a, a thankful heart for uh, for being here tonight, for being under the Word, Lord, and uh, and and getting a special message that you know just that simple act of faith sometimes can can really be uh, a powerful and redemptive value. Father, we just ask that, um, Lord, as we go into this world for the rest of this week, and Lord, that you would just let us be a light to the world. Let us be a witness for your, your grace, your love of mankind, such that you're drawing them to you. And Father, we would, uh, that we would t- then take all that praise, honor, and glory, turn it around, and give it back to you, Father. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you for coming tonight. Uh, I believe Awana is still going on, so might be a little patient there. Thank you again. Be safe going home, and we'll see you on Sunday morning.